So as a background to Captivate, uh, there were actually two arms uh, to this study. Originally, there was the minimal residual disease cohort, uh, followed by the fixed duration cohort. Uh, what was presented at ASH was a five-year update on the minimal residual disease cohort, and that was where uh, approximately 150 uh, patients were initially treated with uh, one year of combined venetoclax and abrutinib uh, with a three-month abrutinib lead-in. Uh, they then assessed the undetectable minimal residual disease rates uh, in both the peripheral blood and the bone marrow in these patients. And of the patients that achieved undetectable minimal residual disease, these patients were then randomly assigned to either placebo or a brutinib at 420 milligrams daily and to be continued uh, in, in, indefinitely until uh, disease progression. And these patients have now been followed for five years and updates on that trial is what is being uh, orally presented at ASH. So at ASH in the oral presentation this year, uh, five years of follow-up was presented on the minimal residual disease cohort. So at this point in time, the patients in this population that had attained minimal residual disease had been off of treatment on placebo for four years or had continued on abrutinib for four years. And what the study was interested in looking at was particularly the progression-free survival in these patient groups and whether there was a difference in placebo versus abrutinib. So the four-year PFS uh, was 88% uh, uh, in the uh, placebo arm versus 95% in the abrutinib arm. And while there is some numeric difference there, the, uh, re the difference is not statistically significant at that time. Uh, the four-year overall survival was 100% uh, in, in the uh, placebo, uh, placebo arm versus 98% in the abrutinib arm. Uh, and so what, what the trial and the presentation has shown is with a, a four-year treatment-free interval, patients are having progression-free survival that is not statistically significant from abrutinib, continuing abrutinib single agent 420 milligrams daily um, of those patients that obtained minimal residual disease when they got the abrutinib and venetoclax for, for one year combination initially. And why this is, uh, I think, really meaningful to patients is ultimately if we obtain uh, FDA approval for this combination, then patients can get treated with both a BTK and a BCL2 inhibitor, which we know independently are such effective treatments, but they can get them together for a year and hopefully benefit from many years of a treatment-free interval. Uh, also, of course, we want to make sure that uh, the combination is um, safe and uh, was previously reported uh, is the initial one-year combination of, of the two uh, drugs, Brutinib and Venetoclax, uh, had very low uh, discontinuation rates in this patient population due to toxicity, uh, well under 10%. And um, you know, specifically uh, of note, though, this patient population was uh, looking at patients age 70 and under, and, and we are interested as we get more data on the GLOW study um, and further follow up on that uh, in terms of its, its toxicity. Uh, there, there does seem to be some differences uh, when we use this combination in older patient populations, but certainly in this younger uh, patient population that, uh, you know, clinically are, are going to be the ones that, that probably are going to benefit the most from long treatment-free intervals because of their young age. This looks like a great combination that's also safe. I'd say of note, in the placebo arm, uh, in terms of safety, there were no new atrial fibrillation events uh, in, in the uh, post-randomization period. Uh, and so that is also of particular interest given Abrutinib's known um, you know, potential to lead to increased rates of atrial fibrillation. Uh, and, and again, highlights the importance of not only uh, the, the patient benefit uh, of being in a treatment-free interval 
um, and, and not having to worry about, about continuing in treatment indefinitely. Um, also, we've highlighted the efficacy of this combination and it should not be overlooked the potential benefit to significant financial toxicity that occurs with an indefinite treatment uh, that could potentially be avoided with this time-defined combination.